a warm welcome to another Goodbye Disease presentation. We've looked at Goodbye Hypertension, Goodbye Heart Disease, Goodbye Diabetes, Goodbye Obesity, and with this session, we're going to look at depression. How to say goodbye to depression. So I want us to just get into this. It's a very relevant topic, especially for the times we live in. Many people are struggling with this, and we need to answer the questions. So many have that hopeless feeling called depression. Worldwide, depressive disorders afflict millions of people of every age and race and religion and education. More people are suffering from depression now than in previous generations. In a desperate attempt to cope, billions of antidepressant drugs and tranquilizers are gulped down each year, yet the problem only continues to grow and to grow. The issues constantly become bigger and bigger. The World Health Organization reported in 2001 that by the year 2020, this is this year, depression would likely be the second leading cause of disease and the, and the, and the disease burden of, this, of, of the world. So this is a sobering thought to realize that it's exactly what is happening right now in 2020. The condition of the mind affects the health to far a greater de degree than many would realize. Many of the diseases afflicting humanity are the result of mental depression. Negative emotions such as grief and anxiety and discontent, sorrow, guilt, insecurity, rejection, financial strain, and yes, pandemics, to name but a few, all tend to break down the life forces and invite physical disease and death. Did you know that heart attacks are much more common among depressed men? Science now have also found that depression can cause the bones of even young women to lose dangerous amounts of calcium. In cases of serious depression, brain function become deranged and various brain cells shrivel and die to the extent that key areas of the brain shrink and cause atrophy. As a consequence of depression, the whole body suffers, exerting its oppressive effects upon the whole person, mentally, spiritually, and physically. For the well-being and happiness of all, it would be good for us to learn more about depression and, most importantly, how to prevent this disease. You know, the old saying says, prevention is better than cure. And it's so true. So what is depression? Well, nearly everyone fights discouragement at times. Feelings of depression, on the other hand, can be a symptom of a wide variety of deeper medical and psychological conditions. So how can we know the difference and tell whether it's serious or, or not? Well, first of all, it's important to understand the difference between discouragement and depression. Everyone is tempted to be discouraged occasionally, experiencing a small dip in the mood that can be lifted by good thoughts and, and prayer and positive thinking. The cause of discouragement is usually understood and it's feelings that are temporary. We often call these uh, feelings the blues, you know, and sometimes we've got this Monday blues. You, you know the expression. Depression, on the other hand, are set apart by feelings of persistent sadness, gloom, reduced physical activity, feelings of irrational anxiety, and uh, a sense of hopelessness are often present. 
Depressed people may have other symptoms such as difficulty in concentrating and their sleep and appetite may also be affected. They may feel tired all the time and may lose interest in life. Negative thinking and even thoughts of suicide can also occur with, with depression. So what brings on these feelings of depression? Some cases of depression appear suddenly for no apparent reason. Others are triggered by stressful life events, such as the death of a loved one, or divorce, uh, a job loss, the pandemic. We found ourselves uh, at a place where, you know, this is so complicated for everybody. Many face financial hardship and, and loss of all sorts. So what is stress? What is stress? Stress is the non-specific response of the body to any demand, whether it is caused by or result in pleasant or unpleasant conditions. I'm taking this from Heinz, uh, from Dr. Hans uh, Selai. Now, there's two main kinds of stress. We've got the positive stress called eustress. Uh, I would experience eustress when, when I would, uh, would bungee jump or a wedding may most likely cause eustress. On the other hand, we also have a negative stress called distress. Now, distress may cause the following physical challenges. So, so the question is, how can the stress response make us sick? It may cause the following physical challenges. Chronically elevated blood pressure. Constantly using stored energy. So it means, you know, they, we're going to tire more easily. And then blocked insulin secretion. And that causes high risk of diabetes. So... What happens during this chronic stress um, uh, episode? High amounts of cortisol is released and this puts strain on the liver that causes increased uh, glyconeogenesis and uh, increased blood glucose. Chronic stress will also promote, uh, promote lipolysis and uh, uh, especially in our extremities. And so when we have this prolonged negative stress and its effects, it increases heart rate. It increases our blood pressure. It increases our concentration of fat in the blood. It increases blood sugar. It increases cholesterol in, in the blood. And it increases blood clotting. It increases the uh, deposition of fat and cholesterol in the arteries. Chronic stress has a direct effect on, on hypertension. Negative stress causes the body to release uh, thyroxine, uh, aldosterone, and exotocins, which all enable the body to constrict our blood vessels and retain fluids, resulting in much greater blood volume. This added pressure over time can cause severe damage to fragile arteries. Chronic stress has also got a direct effect on diabetes. We find more glucose and fatty acids in the bloodstream. They gum up in the wrong places. And so the glycocorticoids make uh, fat also uh, cells more insulin resistant. And these fat cells release another hormone that promote insulin resistance in other tissues like the, the muscle and the, and the liver. Mm -hmm. And during these stressful times, the body releases more serum cholesterol in order to provide more energy for the body and when it begins to respond to a physical stressor. However, if there is no physical reaction to the stressor, the released fats, the triglycerides, are not used and in turn they remain in the bloodstream uh, looking for a place to deposit and they normally go and uh, and, 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 and dump in the heart and in the brain. We also find that 
chronic stress has a direct effect on our immunology. Stress can decrease our white blood cell count, which will lead to poor health. The immunological system includes the following white blood cell groups, which identify and destroy foreign substances. We're talking about our uh, phytocytes, uh, that, that's the destroyers, and our lymphocytes, and our T cells, and our B cells. We also find that genes can be, can be turned on or off by uh, the effect of these stresses. So stress can be implicated for, for turning these genes on or off. In medicine, when you see 30% increase uh, of a risk of anything, it will be over the news. However, when we look at this research, we find that there is a 500% increase. So how you think what you focus your mind on has a far greater impact on your health than what you are eating. People who are reacting to really stressful events may feel numb for a while. Uh, they are less able to handle their jobs or other responsibilities. And they need time to work through the grief and, and to heal. Giving the grieving person love and encouragement, help with their responsibilities and sufficient time to heal, these things will usually take care of such a depression. You can just imagine what the effect of this prolonged pandemic and, and pandemic will find ourselves in. The basic need is not met and very alarming is the fact that it becomes the new norm of our society. Talking with other people such as uh, a wise friend, a teacher, a pastor, often, you know, it speeds recovery. If depression lasts too long or the person becomes suicidal, a professional counsel, uh, counselor may be needed. Well, we find that poor habits is a, is a main reason for, um, for depression. Research also confirms that many cases of depression are, are brought slowly and subtly over time by our poor lifestyle habits and, and choices. Science has identified several factors that can promote and even intensify feeling of hopelessness and despair. And among them are, and you're not going to like what I'm going to say, alcohol. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant and has been shown to increase depression, including suicidal thoughts and behavior. Another one is smoking. And I know you don't like what I'm saying, but research suggests that smoking may play an equal, if not even more dangerous role than consuming alcohol in the development of depression. Smokers are three times more likely to experience major depression. And then there's the social drug called caffeine. And I know that you really don't like me now. After uh, assessing about 143,000 people, Scandinavian researchers found a significant increase in depression among women who were heavy coffee drinkers. In addition, these same women also had more problems coping with stress. Physical activity is another one. A major study of 8,000 adults revealed that the less active persons are, the more depressed they were likely to be. Improper diet is another culprit. Sugary sweets, heavy rich fatty meals can contribute to blood sugar imbalances and feelings of depression. And then there's city living, stressful living, uh, living circumstances, overcrowding, excess noise, pollution can all contribute to anxiety and depression. And, and some of us in the cities, we are, we are really tied down by these circumstances. And then there's food allergies. For some people, food allergies can play a major role in depression. These may need to be identified. You know, what things 
uh, are you are you reacting against? And then there's medications. Some high blood pressure medications as well as other types of medicine can bring about depression. You need to consult with your doctor about this possibility uh, when you are struggling with, uh, with this uh, lifestyle disease. So let's talk about overcoming depression. You know, what can be done to overcome depression? What can we do? Well, Medication for depression can sometimes provide temporary relief of symptoms, chronic use of antidepressants and, and tranquilizers can lead to physical or emotional dependency and may actually de deepen the depression. I believe there's something better than just swallowing a pill because I'm not feeling so well. Nearly all types of depression respond to basic common sense measures. For example, and I'm sharing with you the key words to stress and depression recovery, balance. Sometimes depression is caused by imbalanced life. We need balance in our life. We need to balance work and, and family and, and worship and Yes, even our, our social life. A second thing that we need to look at is purposeful tasks. All of us need to do some kind of productive work. Whether it's uh, heading a corporation, washing a car, cooking a meal, uh, planting in the garden, a depressed person especially needs the feeling of accomplishment, you know, uh, completion and satisfaction found in doing something useful each day. Without something to get out of the bed for, something to do, even the most stable person would likely become depressed. We also need structure and regularity. Whether depressed or not, we all need structure in our lives to keep mentally healthy. Observing regular hours of eating, sleeping, and working can go a long way to promote mental and physical health. And then a healthful diet. Eating a simple diet of fresh, natural foods gives increased mental and physical and energy and can be helping in balancing this chemistry of our brain. Eating only fresh fruit for a day or two can do wonders in clearing the mind and banishing fatigue. I've seen this time after time where on, uh, on a detox diet, people would tell me after the second, third day, wow, it just feels like, you know, the lights are busy coming on. And it's, it's, it's most amazing to just watch these people. Adequate rest is very important. Periods of quietness and calm are especially important in today's fast-paced, pressured life. We need a time to just sit and reflect. And you know, with our, with our race in life, we, we never get to that point. Another one is sleep deprivation. And uh, I need to tell you that sleep deprivation can set off or uh, intensify depression. Most people feel that the best would be to have about seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Then we need to get daily exercise. Experts agree that regular exercise may be one of the most powerful natural antidepressant available. Aerobic activities such as brisk walking or swimming or cycling, stimulate the release of mood elevating, pain relieving, natural chemicals called endorphins. Increased exercise reduces anxiety, depression, and life dissatisfactions. Then what's very important is, is regular sunshine. It was, uh, it is what Solomon has said. Guys, <laughs> the reality is we go to work when it's dark, and we come back from work when it's dark. We never get into the sun. Solomon says, 
Truly, the light is sweet, and it, it, it's pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 7. So daily sun exposure has been used successfully for many years in the treatment of various types of depression. And then we need productive hobbies. This is so important. You know, we, we have a creative part. Each one of us have a creative part in us that needs to be um, explored. And, you know, might it be painting? Might it be building um, uh, puzzles? Might it be planting uh, succulents? Might it be coachwork or or whatever it is we need a hobby and then what's needed is changing perceptions and expectations you see sometimes we expect more than we should from life and from people people will disappoint we need to to divide our tasks that sometimes are big and unmanageable into small manageable parts don't try and change the world in one day. Complete one task and then go to another task and tick it off. I've done it. And then we need to set reasonable and realistic goals. Sometimes, and this is why the New Year's resolutions most of the times would fail, is that uh, they unrealistic. So we need to set ourselves reasonable, realistic goals. And uh, this is to be implemented daily and those goals weekly and those goals monthly and those goals yearly. We need to set ourselves those goals. And then another one that's very um, common is that we need to avoid procrastination. Take on a little bit every day, but just keep it at it. Keep at it. Don't lose heart. Just go and do that little bit again. And just go and do it. The moment you leave it, you start procrastinating and the mountain becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. I need to also tell you that I have found that you have to set boundaries. Don't live under the expectations of others. Many times we get abused by others trying to live our lives for us. Set boundaries in your relationships with your work commitments and any other expectations that may come your way. It is not wrong to say no when you cannot manage something. Set boundaries. It will protect you at the end of the day. And then don't compromise your values or your beliefs. This is so important. You see, over years of counseling with people, I found a great stress factor is trying to compromise values and beliefs. Trying to adjust so that you would make others happy in what you believe and what your values are. And I want to tell you, it just causes a lot of pain and a lot of stress. Avoid that if you can. And then you need to schedule a regular me time. This is the time where you do what you need to do rather than do what others expect from you. You need me time. It should be diarized. There should be a little time slot where you can spend time doing what you love doing. And then a very important one, I've seen the effect of this so many times, is that we need to learn how to forgive others and forgive ourselves. It's a major stressor when we have the inability to forgive others for where they have wronged us. More importantly, it is to get to the point where one can forgive self. This is a major problem. We, we tend to be very hard on ourselves. The reality is we do make mistakes and even cause hurt. And we harm others by our actions. But when we've asked for forgiveness, we have to forgive ourselves for those actions. And then in my experience, the most important of this is to trust in God. 
Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, me saying that, you know, depression is because you're not trusting in God. This is just one of those very important factors. Bearing heavy burdens alone is, is enough to crush one's spirit. The Bible encourages us to cast our anxieties on Jesus. For He cares about you and He will sustain you. Well, that is what He says in 1 Peter 5 verse 7. So we need to, to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Very important. The, the, the attitude of gratitude. Educate yourself to express thanks and praising God for the many blessings He has given you. Learn to talk hope and faith. It can have a, a most positive impact on your life. You see, depression can be disheartening. But it doesn't have to be permanently disabling. By improving physical health, choosing positive mental attitude towards life, pursuing worthwhile activities, and developing spiritual goals and values, most people will enable will be able to, to overcome their feelings of, of depression and life rewarding productive lives. In the scripture, we find an interest question and uh, an invitation. It says, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why are you disturbed with me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Psalms 43 verse 5. Why are you in despair, O my soul? I want to pray. That God would bless each of us as we claim this promise and we apply the principles of this talk and place our hope in God who never loses a battle. Please help us to get these messages of hope to more people by subscribing. So below this YouTube video there is a little button that you just need to press and you would see subscribe would highlight and press it as soon as you've closed this uh, this presentation and then please like it please share it if it was helpful to you i want to ask that you would stay blessed that you would stay safe please make contact with me um on my whatsapp number at 082 5721294 if you would need me for any uh, assistance and uh, you could contact me at arnold at brainpowerseminars.com you keep well keep safe and be blessed amen mm -hmm.